99 checks. So in order for white to win, they have to either checkmate black's king, or check him 99 times in a game, or win on time but that's for cowards only. But anyway, for context, it will take you at least a month to do the thing 99 times with your girlfriend, brutal honesty, I myself probably will never be able to fulfill such an achievement. So giving 99 checks in a game of chess is absolutely ridiculous, the 50 move rule will ruin everything. But at the end of the day, I don't make the rules here. Counter turn is one of the many chess variants available on chess.com, and the rules are very simple. Players freely customize the position based on the already given scenario. And that's all. They didn't even explain the most obvious confusing thing. What are these two pawns? As far as I can see, they are not white, they are not black, they are also not Asians. I have no idea. We get a 1281 from Vietnam, and he got to this elo after only playing 63 games of chess. I am scared. He puts down the king. Let us analyze the position first. I'm pretty sure this pawn cannot promote because I think I have played these kinds of positions in the past time better than my viewers videos, but just to be safe, I'll put a knight on f6, defending the pawn, and also controlling g8. Bishop on b3. My king is completely trapped on a dark square, and yet this guy decided that he wants a light bishop. I'll show him how to play with bishops. He only has two pawns left, and since it's already very obvious that he'll put both of them in the center, it's time to start focusing on our own build. Ok at the moment I have absolutely no idea why he wants a flank pawn instead of a center one, but at the same time I'm very worried that it has something to do with a grey pawn behind it. But of course, there's nothing I can do about it. This way I will instantly have a battery aiming straight at his king right when the game begins. Last pawn on e3. He ran out of materials, I'll put down the rest of my materials. My bishops are absolutely insane, and his knight is already trapped even before the game begins. a5. I'll take that. That is the very first pawn that he put down from his reserved material bank, and it dies on its very first move. e4. Ok on second thought I don't really want to take his knight anymore because I still don't know what the grey pawns do. I have been trying to click on them ever since the beginning of this game and nothing happens, so I guess I cannot use them, but I cannot say the same thing for my opponent because the game purposely put both grey pawns on white side instead of sharing with us. So I guess, I will just be safe. D take c4. Knight d4. Knight d5. Knight takes pawn takes. Ok I don't really want to take this. But this pawn blocking my two bishops is significantly more annoying than it blocking my opponent's only one bishop and it is even on different color from my king. So I guess, I have to make the capture. I mean who knows, maybe he won't trade. He didn't. Not only he didn't trade, but he also decided to block his own bishop. Very convenient. It is a bit annoying that now my dark bishops are also in a very awkward situation, but at least we know they will eventually become useful. f3. I'll go back. King takes the great pawn. I am so confused. Provided he can capture the pawn, grey and white are most likely not on the same team, so why did they exist in the first place, that is the question that we will answer in the next counter turn video. e4. I was very sad that my dark square bishops didn't have a good position, but since he voluntarily moved his king onto a light square, it made things substantially a lot more convenient for me. Bishop a4. That blunders a lot. Blunder the queen, or blunder the king, Pick your poison. None of the above. Counter turn. 100% win rate.